So I like to go on these little nature walks on the property. You know, when you got 40 acres, you got a good amount of room to roam. And one of the places I like to go and see for, for whatever reason is the first place where we camped. Our first time camping out here was before the property was actually in our name. It was a couple days left until it closed all the way. We got permission, you know, even though it was going to be ours, we, we got the right permission to come and camp on the land and, and to start doing stuff. So here I am. This is where we kind of just came in with the truck and we found this opening and parked here and on the other side of the trees set up camp. Our first time, I think we camped like three or four days. We were super excited to, to be here. There's where we set up our tent. We moved tons of rocks. There's some of them there. They're kind of buried in the snow. And there's our camp ring. This is also where we started to hike around and get, got to know the property. And, and we're, we were looking for what the best spot would have been to, to build our house. And we really looked hard at a spot. I don't know, probably 60 yards that way. That was really tempting to put, put the house at. But ultimately ended up choosing where we are now, which is farther that way. Uh, it's probably two, maybe 250 yards from, from right here. But throughout the, the first few, few years of owning our land, we camped in uh, a few different spots. I think we have, we have like, we have like four different fire rings set up, just moving from spot to spot, closer and closer to where we are now. We had to remove a bunch of trees to extend our driveway in, and that's one of the reasons why we we would set up in one spot. And then uh, once the road got in further, we found a, a, another good spot to be closer to where the action was, where the work was, clearing the road. So anyway, a little bit of backstory on uh, on the land here and our our first few summers of owning it. We owned it for a couple years before we actually moved out here this last summer. So yeah, the old camp spot. The first spot was right here. I really, I like this spot. <laughs> anyway, back to the build. My light on. All right. So the last video. You saw that this was the only one without any kind of baffle. And instead of buying a whole nother pack of these, they come in 10 packs. I'd have, I'd use only two and have eight left. Instead of that, I've got this roofing underlayment. So the, the plan is to cut some strips of wood to go inside the rafters here. And then stretch this thing tight, staple it, cut it to size, and that will help separate, um, kind of separate the insulation from the air gap that is needed right here for the air to come through so that our roof is vented somewhat properly. Don't recommend doing what I just did. <laughs> Going over the clamps like that. 
totally unsafe. Go ahead, call me out. I already called myself out. <laughs> Are you crazy? I will have to say though, I love the smell of fresh cut wood. It's the best smell. It really is. They should make candles out of Fresh cut wood smell? Yeah. You know what would be a better tool for this? Table saw. Table saw. <laughs> but it's buried, so I'm not getting it out. <laughs> Safety third. Always. What do you think? They look nice. Skis? Oh no. Look out. <laughs> it's the claw. <laughs> Nothing can stop the claw. Right? Right. <laughs> we are running the dryer today and it is toasty here in the shed. We vent inside instead of outside with this little sock over the vent. Um, so it warms it up in here. Anyway, the insulation must be doing something. If you can look at our temperature, we're like at, what are we at now? Almost 70 degrees. 70 degrees. It's close. Maybe 68, but nice and warm. So maybe insulation was a good idea. So I put these curves on the boards here to help the roofing underlayment. So run, it's going to run along here and hit this curve and curve down and then staple to the bottom so that when air comes through here, it hits that underlayment and goes up like so. Hopefully that makes sense. Now that's fun. Getting this back out. Oh yeah, and now that is exciting. That's what we framed the shed with. Yep. We're gonna frame our house with it too. Yep. Wow. Why do you bring that up? I know, I can't wait for that day. I know. <laughs> first things first. Yeah. Pretty good looking, I think. Yep. How we improvise. This is how. <laughs> there you go, folks. So that's an inch and three quarter gap there. And you can see the bird blocking holes peeking up there at the end. Right down in here. So this isn't actually up against it at all, it just gently slopes, slopes down. Shed. The whole thing. The whole thing. Yay. <sighs> now we don't have a choice. Mud, rain, snow. We're outside. 
tornadoes, <laughs> hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, pestilence and disease. We don't have a choice. We, we're outside. Yep. We got any. Unless I could come up with something else. I don't know what. I mean, we do have to clean up the shed still. But yeah, that'll, that'll yeah. only take an hour or so. I'm not going to. I don't know how crazy I'm going to get about that. <laughs> At least get the floor clear and the stuff back up here in the loft. Yep. <sighs> but anyway. This feels good though. This video's not over yet either though. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> So I was out here riding the four-wheeler and this happened. I got a lot of mud on it and now Dad's gonna pull it out. mud in there you guys well the back's not too gummed up but the front is you need to get a stick and just dig that mud out underneath the front here buddy <laughs> it wasn't even your fault was it you were just here to help <laughs> Logan you need to get a stick and dig out all that mud wasn't my fault either. Yeah. All right. I've got everything back up here, plus a few extra things. It's amazing what organizing can do. And, uh, of course, the insulation kind of forced us into that. And I got down here mostly cleaned up. The floor is all opened up. All the trash is cleaned out. And I have to thank my helper here. Couldn't do it without him. What do you have to say for yourself? You're welcome. <laughs> hey, look at that. You got a little smiley face on your face mask, huh? You had to have one too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, there it is. There it is. Upside down. <laughs> Very nice. I really appreciate your help. You know that? Thank, thank you. Um, no, I, I'm thanking you. Thank you, man. And then you say you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Give five. Okay. Good job, man. Ugh. Okay. I've got, I mean... Of course, I mean, there's still junk on the, around here and there. And before I put the insulation in, I had stuff sitting on these little blocks, you know, and holding it. And now I've, I don't have anywhere to put them other than in piles and stuff. I'm going to make, gonna make some shelves, some quick ones, put them up right here next to this other shelf across this wall. I might make, uh, I don't know, one or two, maybe three. Anyway, let's see, let's see what we can whoop up with the, the scrap materials I got hanging around.
won't go in the groove all the way. So I'm using these clamps to get it in there the rest of the way. That's a tight fit, which is good. It's basically what you want. All right, there you have it. A quick little simple shelf to build. Show you some quick details. Three quarter inch plywood. This is three eighths plywood. All scraps. And I've got these strips back here for extra support because these three eighths isn't very much material. And also I can use this to put screws in to mount it to that wall over there. So each shelf is supported. So is that one at the back. Now I gotta move that big old thing of cat food and hang it, hang it on the wall. Check it out. This looks so good, huh? Look how clean it is. Yeah. This, this shelf makes a huge difference. This was good. like a big heaping pile of yes, it was. what looked like junk, but it was actual stuff and tools and fasteners and glues and yeah. trinkets. This is nice to get it up off the shelves and, well, off the working tables and it's, it's out of the, the way and I've got it feels I feel like we have more room in here than oh, we did yeah. in our garage back in Phoenix <laughs> it's so spacious I know right but we're excited to get back outside 
Yes, it has been drying up quite nicely. There is actual dirt here um, and not so much mud. Yes, and I'm excited about it. And the weather forecast says... There's no storms, so... No can... storms for the 10 days. Of course, that could change. It usually does. Yeah, <laughs> but at least we can get back outside and working on the septic. Right, we got to get back on the septic and back on the extension of our road. We got some more clearing to do of trees and moving plants, trees around and uh, rocks and whatnot so that we can start digging yes. a big hole for our tank. Yes, progress <laughs> back outside. I'm excited for that. This was good to get done. I'm glad it's done. It was. But we did want, you know, we, we were, do want to be working outside. We were forced into it. Yes, we were. But it was a good thing. We had something we could do during all the nastiness outside. Yeah. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for following our journey. We'll catch you on the next one. See, See ya. ya.